I thought I'd make this video today um, about the Lucas 9H horn or hooter that's off my Series 2 E-Type. Uh, this time not to tell you how clever I am, but quite the reverse, how stupid I am. Um, I found that the horns stopped working one day, uh, which was quite a surprise because they had been working perfectly fine as far as I was concerned, not that I use it that much. But when I pressed the horn push, absolutely nothing happened. So I convinced myself, first of all, that the horn push, which had always been a little bit flimsy, uh, perhaps wasn't engaging correctly. So I unscrewed the end of that and uh, pulled it out and checked it. That was fine. Um, <clears throat> I checked the continuity of the wiring. Checked the fuses, fuse three and fuse six. They were all working. I thought this is strange. It can only be because I could hear the, um, the relay clicking it must be a 40 relay, which was a disappointment because I'd uh, fairly recently bought a relay. Um, so I went and bought another relay, absolutely convinced that that was the problem. And as you know, this is the uh, four terminal connection. The W2 comes from the horn push. The W1 comes from fuse six, the green. So the purple and black goes to W2, the horn push. The green goes to W1 from fuse six. The brown and purple goes to C2, which is fuse three, and the purple and yellow goes to C1 through to the horn. So putting that in, expecting it to spring into life, nothing happened. So I was convinced then that it must be the lead, the purple and yellow going all the way down to the horns that wasn't working. So I checked the continuity of that and discovered that was fine. So then I thought, well, it must be the horn itself that stopped working, but why would both stop working? I've eventually discovered that one horn had actually stopped working some time ago. I hadn't appreciated it and I was relying just on the, the low note horn being a bit deaf these days. I perhaps hadn't spotted that the high note wasn't working. But uh, neither horn, when I took them off and put them against the battery, um, because it's a very simple job, um, as far as I can see, there's no risk on mixing the polarity up. You just connect one to the positive, one to the negative, and you should get a nice loud or very loud note but nothing, uh, which was a shame. So I convinced myself that the horns had stopped working. Now, to get replacement horns of these isn't that easy anymore. Uh, anyone you're gonna get is gonna be 50 years old anyway, and probably have been in a similar situation. So uh, I looked around for some new ones, and uh, yes, you can get them, but they're rounding about sort of 35, 45 pounds a piece. So I thought, well, I will just see if I can dismantle it, and. Um, see if I can mend it, liking to mend things. I looked on the good old internet and, and YouTube and things, I couldn't find anything, so that's hence me doing this one, because there wasn't very much about it. Um, some people had said you can drill those screws out, these ones here, one, two, three, four, five, six around. Uh, I'm, I've not, not been very accurate whenever I've drilled anything out. I've got a bench drill, but uh, um, not very accurate. I thought it must be quicker just to, dr just to grind them off with a Dremel. So that's what I've done. I, I ground them off with the Dremel, as you can see here. And uh, there's nothing on the internet that says what is inside. So I thought, oh, well, we'll open it up and reveal all. The only things you get on the top is, uh, just going on to this one, is the screw, and that adjusts the contact points, not that you can adjust them particularly for much purpose. And then there's this lock nut, which is 19 millimeter. You can take that off, uh, just uh, an ordinary uh, gripping, uh, nut, take that off and then you can unscrew the centre bolt. Um, so that's what I, I did first of all, I removed that and removed the centre bolt. There are some instructions on the internet um, that, that tells you how you can put that back and what you adjust it to, um, that's readily available. Uh, so I took that off, ground off the, the six using a Dremel and then lo and behold you can lift that off and uh, that's what's revealed underneath. Now then, I can start owning up to how stupid I am. I first thought, well, all I had to do before doing any of that was just squirt some WD-40 or some contact cleaner down the mouthpiece here and give it a good shake and a jolly up. Um, well, that's pointless because as you can see, that is where the mouthpiece mechanism goes to and then that plate sits over the top, and that's the vibrating plate that produces the tone. And other than a very tiny hole, 
which is just there, as you can see, if I move it there, see that little hole that's showing up red with the towel? Uh, there's no connection between the two. So any fluid and things that I put down, that wasn't going to go anywhere. Um, but what also showed, again, how stupid I am, is that when I turned it over and had a look at it, there were bits of grit everywhere, which really isn't that surprising since I decided in my wisdom to grit blast the whole thing when I was restoring it so I could paint it nicely. And although I blocked up the opening very, very well, the grit is so pernicious and so... Um, you see it's still on my finger there, can you see it? That's in the mouthpiece here, just pull that out there. and It's amazing where that grit gets to. Do not grit blast your horns, because you'll bugger them up. Because when I took it to pieces, I found that now not only was it um, mucky with the WD-40 I'd sprayed inside it, but there was loads of grit in it. Well, not a lot, but there was enough. And this shaft, which sits on the plate here, can you see how it's going up and down? That's what makes it what makes a vibration for the horn sound that plate has to vibrate courtesy of an electromagnet and the electromagnet is what sits in the top here with the connections either side and it relies on that shaft here going up and down inside there now then normally that would be fine but mine was full of grit and I hadn't realized and I therefore connected it up to the battery again and tried to shake it loose or move it and in the process keeping the power on I managed to melt as you can see here the innards so the second tip is after <laughs> do not grip blast do not put WD-40 in the third tip is do not leave it connected to the power because if that does not move out and cut off the power by hitting the contact point which is there that goes up and down like that. If that shaft doesn't move up and down, you can see that's where it normally would rub on the contact point and push the contact point. Can you see a similar sort of marking there? It would push it up and down. Where are we going with it? Conventional contact point, so it opens and closes, opens and closes, or something like that. Uh, if it doesn't cut off the current so that that drops back down again, you will do what I've done, which is burn it out. Now, in the ideal world, this unit would all just drop out and you'd be able to put in a replacement unit. And I, I can't find they're available. Uh, Taff the Horn, I've advertised on a website, but I've been unable to contact him or she. Uh, so they say they res restore and refurb. Um, uh, Lucas uh, Hooters and they've got quite an impressive array of things they've done so they may well be able to provide but I couldn't contact and I couldn't get hold of any um, so I think it's going to be knackered frankly but I thought anyway you'd be interested to see what's inside it there is a gasket that goes around here you can see that you can just cut new gasket you need one above the plate and one below the plate if you did want to renew yours and um, what I found was that this goes back on again reasonably okay back onto those where I've ground them off and I reckon that uh, that would clamp together very tightly again you can see here um, putting mole grips on I have just clamped it back in and it it nibs down very nicely and since you're not going to remove it probably ever again I think you could just use something like JB weld just to uh, weld it back together or, or frankly a sealant gasket sealant or something like that um, it may be, having now looked at it and thought about it, that if you just bang this bolt that sits in here, this screw that sits in there, uh, a few times with a hammer, the, the only thing that would likely stop it working is that that shaft gets jammed. So I found success with that one. That's exactly what I did with the second one, which also wasn't working. I banged the old uh, screw top without adjusting anything a good few times with a hammer and it did shock it free and that now is is working okay um, so I only need one not two um, the other interesting thing is um, if that does work you might also need to adjust the contact points now I've found this a bit baffling um, let's see if I can open this up again bear with me I found the contact points 
quite baffling because I can't see, not only can I see how you can't get them out, but that screw adjustment that I was referring to, that's the shaft here of the screw adjustment that comes down. So you can see that it comes down from there. Um, interestingly, to adjust the um, gap, it's very difficult to show you, to adjust the gap, you would normally separate that from that. But of course, where that screw adjustment goes, it pushes on this top bit here. And the spring is also attached to the same mechanism. So I can't see how it changes the gap. It might be that when it's assembled, it makes it possible to adjust the gap because it might be then pushing down on here. But because there's nothing pushing down on here at the moment, it doesn't look as if the screw adjustment does anything, but clearly the screw adjustment must do something. Rather strangely again, that when you turn the screw, turning it clockwise doesn't screw it down, it actually screws it up and turning it anti-clockwise doesn't unscrew it, it screws it the other way if that makes any sense to it. It's, it's, the, it's almost as if it's got a left hand thread. Um, so when you think you're pushing it down, you're actually screwing it up. But that's just a, a little added idiosyncrasy that I discovered when I was trying to turn that. But anyway, so you've got the contact points in there. Uh, they could possibly wear over time and need a tiny little bit of adjustment on that screw. Or that centre bit here could also jam up because of crud and muck or something, or rust. And that probably would just shock free. Other than that, I can't see how you get this out. I don't know if others more knowledgeable or wiser than I can suggest. But there's no way that I can see that that terminal here and that terminal there, how you get those from the two terminals at the top because there's nothing to suggest that those terminals would unscrew or pull out. But I may well be wrong, maybe. You see there's a sort of a rivet goes through the top of each. So you could, in theory, drill those through, I suppose. I don't know. But what I'm telling you is I don't know very much about it, but I thought nonetheless you'd, you'd find my experience interesting and there may be others out there who might want to add just a bit onto my uh, video now and uh, give me their wisdom as to A, how to find replacement parts for it or repair it, uh, and B, uh, what their experience has been in repairing it and so on and so forth. But recommendation, if your horn isn't working, I would just give it a sharp tap with a hammer at the top Possibly, if you still find that shaft isn't moving, unscrew this and put a very tiny drop of, um, uh, of um, switch cleaning fluid down there. That might help. Um, but other than that, do not leave the power connected continuously because if that shaft is blocked, all you're going to do is melt it. And then I think that is irretrievable at that point and you'll have to go and buy a replacement or a, or a, a look-alike um, uh, aftermarket part for it. But anyway, that's the case of the H9 Lucas horn and my experience with uh, remedying it. It certainly wasn't the relay, it certainly wasn't the wiring, it certainly wasn't the horn push. And uh, it was that the horns had... Um, stopped working sequentially rather than simultaneously, which is what I first thought had happened. Anyway, I hope you enjoy that video for what it's worth, and I welcome any comments or any advice or guidance as to helping me get this sorted out, other than going out and buying brand new ones. All the best, and uh, be with you soon, no doubt. Bye-bye.